What do you think a nine-year-old would want? A go-kart. A go-kart? Is that yeah. even safe? I don't know. When our kids were nine years old, it was super easy to shop for them. Buy them some Matchbox cars, some Star Wars figures. I mean, it was really easy to shop for them. I, now, not so much. The game has, like, it's on. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 114. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, if you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you too, sir. <laughs> How exciting. Did you think we would make it this this long? Um, I don't know if I thought we were, I didn't think we were gonna make it this long. Now we I got a miracle. Hopes. And then also, here's the thing, is when we got married, you were already like making plans to have to wipe my butt and, and push me around in a wheelchair most of our lives. Well, I was not wiping your butt, but I was pushing you in a wheelchair on our honeymoon. That's true. And now here we are, 13 years later, 14 yeah. years together, 13 years married, and we just today listed my wheelchair, right? My, my mobility scooter that we use to go all throughout the parks and stuff. I put new batteries in it and I changed out the ignition key because I snapped the key off inside of the ignition. Yeah. And we just listed it on offer up. I mean, we thought I was going to need that for the rest of my life. In fact, when we bought it, we bought a brand new one figuring that's going to have to last me a long time. And here we are selling it. How exciting is that? It's pretty exciting. What is something that you thought would always be the same forever that you had only hope for it to deteriorate Right. that has changed since you started keto? I'm curious to see what people say because I never, you know, for the life of me thought that I would be out of that scooter. I never thought I'd be walking without the pain. And, you know, I still walk with a limp. People notice it, but I don't have the pain. I don't have all of like you know, the arthritis that goes with it, you know, and it's, you know, walking with a limp is a 30 year habit. It still stiffens up a little bit, but it doesn't hurt. And I didn't think that was ever, ever going to happen without major surgery. Well, and your stamina. Yeah. The stamina that we just have for the day is so different. Yeah. Like, isn't it nice not, I mean, we're tired. We need to get more sleep. We always complain about that. Right. But I don't hit the bed every night like, it's my coffin, mm -hmm. right? And when I wake up in the morning, I'm pretty much ready to go. Yeah. And that was never the case. Well, first of all. 10 years ago. 13 years ago when I married you, I was lucky if you were up at noon. I didn't usually see the crack of 1 p.m. And now you're up at 5 a.m. Exhausted all the time, always mm -hmm. waking up with a headache. Yep. And, and really just waiting for the pain to kick in in my feet. Because that's another thing. I'm wearing sandals right now. Right. And that wasn't something that I could even do for an extended period of time. My plantar fasciitis was so bad. Yeah. And I had so much joint pain and inflammation. I just went from getting off my feet to how long before I can get off my feet again. Right. And that's something else that you didn't think you were going to have 13 years ago. What's that? That you would have allowed your hair to go silver and you'd actually look younger. <laughs> that is crazy talk. Well, and also like... You look younger now than when we got married and back then you were coloring your hair to keep looking young. How bad was my skin when we got married? <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. There's oh my so gosh. What we ate was insane. So like, yeah, I'm excited to be celebrating our 13th anniversary. We, and we're doing it in the Keys. I was going to say, that's definitely not something that we would do. We yeah. would be having an anniversary where we would do the least amount of actual activity. Yeah, in the past. before keto, our, our celebrating our anniversary was, let's see, we would get up. And then we would go out to something like Golden Corral. Right. And we would gorge. Yeah. Then we would go home. Nap. We'd take a nap. Maybe watch some TV. Maybe do some other stuff. Then we'd take another nap. 
Then we would go to um, Outback Steakhouse. Yeah, because we hadn't. And not even get a a steak. We're going to get, each of us, we were getting a. Chocolate thunder from down under. We were getting the 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 cheese fries, just nothing but appetizers. And you wonder why we were fat. Well, and we weren't happy. No, you know we you were, were miserable. You were ordering not in our it, marriage, just miserable in our body. You were ordering it, thinking like this is going to be fun. Yeah, and it wasn't. It was miserable. You felt bad going to to bed. You know, I just I felt terrible all over. Yeah, it, it was it wasn't treating ourselves. Yeah, but you know. Now, how we celebrate things? Paddle boarding. Well, aside Biking. from, I'm talking about food wise. We, yes, we go paddle boarding. I mean, right now we're in Key Largo. Hiking. Right? Having a great time down in Key Largo. Amazing. So, right now, Rachel is typing to you from the beach. Hello. Uh, but the, when it comes to food, how do we celebrate? Meat. We celebrate with things like this. Yes. Right? So, this was beef Mother's Day. Short ribs. We had beef short ribs. And. We had brisket, one of the best briskets I have ever made. Look at, I mean, look at the smoke ring on that thing. There was a layer of fat across the bottom. That thing was perfect. Uh, we had all kinds of ribs. So you have their baby back ribs and you have pork spear ribs and there was some smoked chicken and some smoked hamburgers. And then we had our coleslaw. Yeah. And that is like celebrating meal kind of stuff now. We also had burnt ends, but somebody didn't share any. Yes. As we talked about on our live stream, yeah. I ate those like right away. Well, Rachel comes into me and she's like, can you believe I put out the ribs and they all dough for them and nobody even noticed the burnt ends. And that's the best part. Well, they like the pork. Right. They like pork stuff better. Because they don't know what burnt ends are. They don't know. It's, it's, you hear burnt don't and you're like, no. And them. I'm like, it's candy. Don't tell them. But yeah, no, we celebrate things very differently. Um, very flavorful. Yeah. Right? Because I think we ate a lot of garbage cardboard food. Yeah. That wasn't, again. Lots, lots of fast food. Yeah, a lot of fast food. We ate food. the Taco Bell menu one day. Well, but I mean, what even grade of meat is Taco Bell? <laughs> like horse? Not even. Like, right? It's it not even. Bad. I don't even think that we were eating any kind of quality. Yeah. I think the Rachel, like the steak that Rachel would have accepted 13 years ago and the level of steak that excites us now is so different. Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we have a sponsor for today. We do. Yes. We have a sponsor. So today's episode of Keto on the Couch is sponsored by... Equip Nutrition. Thanks, guys. So if you don't know what Equip is, they have some really cool nutritional products. Some are great for keto. Uh, some are for people who don't necessarily do keto. They have like clean carbs and stuff. In fact, we passed off a couple of our things to uh, John Paul and to his wife, Michelle, because there are things that they use in the CrossFit you know, like kind of world. You yeah. Know, things like pre-workouts and stuff like that. Exactly. These are our favorite products. This one's backwards. So these are our favorite products from Equip, along with the beef pills, the beef liver pills. Pills, but uh, don't have any more of those. Uh, but we use their protein powder. It's a really clean beef protein. Uh, we love the, the smart sleep. sleep. So yep. this stuff has actually replaced us using the Calm. Uh, it just it tastes really good. It puts you right out. Gives you that magnesium. We really love this product. And then we also like the microgreens to get some of those essential greens once in a while. So yeah. uh, if you're interested in it, there are a, there is a link down below. As of the filming of this Keto on the Couch, I do know that they are currently out of chocolate. I have spoken with them, and they said they are working very hard to get it back in by Memorial Day. Hopefully they will. But yeah, I have to really, I'm, I've grown to really love the vanilla. Me too. The That's so funny you say really, that. The vanilla is really, really good. The, they're all really good. The vanilla is good. The strawberry is good, as well as the chocolate. But, but if you're looking for a clean protein made out of beef, take, check out a quick. I don't think that I would have given much like attention to the vanilla except for they were out of the chocolate yeah it's really really good notice my shirt yes you like my shirt i do well i mean i like matt for matt's rv reviews right i don't know that everybody needs to see you with the toilet on well, your shirt see here's the thing and i just want to say we're filming this as if it's live so anything you say is going in because i don't want to have to do any editing on our anniversary i'm sorry guys <laughs> so here's the thing last week you made fun of my hoodie i did so oh, so you've gone the so opposite I'm gonna go the complete opposite, opposite direction of a priest, and I'm gonna wear a guy sitting on a toilet. 
who's going to go, it passes the potty test. That right? is it's the prime pooping position. That is definitely going another way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, a lot of people did seem to agree with you, as we're going to see in the comments in a little bit. Uh oh. Like, they all agree with you that I look like a monk. I'm sorry. But you had to start. It's true, though. So I figure anniversary, I'm going to wear a comfortable t shirt, a guy sitting on a pot. Let's go someplace fancy <laughs> later with that shirt on. Let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back with all of our different comments. What meal do you like to have when you're celebrating a big day like your birthday or an anniversary? Ribs and brisket. That's what I want. I like prime rib. You like prime rib? Yeah. That's, I feel like that's, that's the king. That's the king of the land. Well, for Anthony me. and Kayla did take you out for prime rib. I was a little bummed. I'm like, wait a second. We're, how come I'm not going out for prime rib? They're like, you're not the mom. I'm like, well, I can't even go. No. It was the so boys and mom. sweet. It was just really, really nice. And I mean, we had already had such a nice celebration on Sunday that I wasn't expecting for them to right. take me out. But I don't know. There's just something so special about getting to go out to lunch with your boys. It was really good. I'm it glad was. you got to go. So let's get into our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. If you're new to our channel, Keto on the Couch is all about our subscribers, which is why we like to do the premiere every Monday. So if you're new and watching this at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Monday, Rachel and sometimes myself, depending on my work schedule, we're down in the chat right now, live chatting. So go ahead and say hello to us. I'm saying good morning, beautiful, right now. <laughs> we we just like to make Keto on the Couch about our subscribers. That's kind of where it came from, talking about like our struggles, talking about our wins and celebrating the wins that you guys have. And this is a segment where we really like to get into the comments and also kind of just highlight some people. Also, I did want to mention a bunch of people last week are asking like, what is this thing that's always like in the bottom corner of the frame? Oh. This is like our switcher. People want to see like what's our behind the scenes. This is like what controls everything, like we're gonna, changing cameras, all that kind of we're stuff. We're going to be doing a vlog. Yeah, showing and we're going to we're going to show the you scenes. the behind the scenes and how we, we don't use. even have a, a living room anymore. It's just no. a giant studio. No, we we don't. It may be documentation for the when we get audited for the fact that. I'm taking a home office seduction, but. We had a friend come over and we were visiting in the front and her um, son needed to use the restroom. And so they came inside and she knew that, you know, what we do. Right. And she's like, oh, I know you like tape, you know, you you have like a home studio. And she's like, whoa, because it's right as you come in the yeah. front door. She's like, whoa, yes. Oh my goodness. And her, her kid basically looked at our living room like want to do city. There used to be like this, yeah. this theme park park type of area where it was like different rooms were different careers right. and the kids could like play that career and it was like yeah we're playing tv production over here <laughs> at miss rachel's house so let's get into our keto college adjunct professor of the week this is somebody who has been putting up things that were super inspirational and uh this week's is jerry hey jerry jerry says for s and g shrugs and grins we know that's not what he really means but <laughs> Said, I found an old shirt from my running club days, 2008 to 2009, and it's a standard extra large, not a 2X or a 3X. It's extremely snug, but going on a brisk morning walk, it worked and felt good emotionally to reach yes. for something that I had thought I'd never fit into. Or, okay, it doesn't quite fit, but it will. Yes, it will. I'm not quite up to getting five to 10 miles in, but I can do one mile, two to three times a day, and I'm rebuilding my endurance. It's a very motivational for myself. Wow. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Oh, Winston Churchill. I love that so much. Jerry. Look at that. Look at I mean, how he's cool. like, he's like, it's snug, but it fits, it's, right? It fits. I mean, when you can fit into it, no matter how snug, it it's does. an accomplishment. I actually and look, think it looks he's, he's great. He's got his little run there that he's doing. It says, I know a guy <laughs> racing. I love that. Oh my gosh, Jerry, that is Jerry, so we are exciting. so proud of you and thank you for just continuing to inspire people because you inspire us. So you absolutely you so do. Well, and I love the fact that you're saying, okay, well, maybe I can't do it in one block of time, but I can go multiple times a day to yeah. get in all of my fitness goals. And I love that so much Yeah, because it's just a, diff a new type of tactic, mm -hmm. the way of thinking about it. Now we have our subscriber of the week, and this week it is Faith. Hey, Faith. Faith said, as I started my keto journey, it was difficult to find ways to reward myself as I reached each of my goals. 
I did 10 pound goals because at the time I felt I could lose 10, That's but good. not the couple hundred I needed to lose. That is something we always talk Brilliant. about. Short term goals for your long term goal. Yeah. She said, let's be honest, rewards for any event, occasion, accomplishment were always centered around food. Mm -hmm. An ice cream treat, a cake, even simple things like coffee and donuts with a friend or special things like a decadent dessert after a fancy dinner with hubby. I was not going to buy new clothes each step along the journey, and I've never been one for a many a mani petty or a massage. When I lost my first ten pounds, my dear husband handed me a tiny box. Inside was a charm that said, "Believe in yourself." Wow, Faith! Now, I actually cut a bunch out because this was long, but she has what each thing is. Ugh. She said, "What a special thought," and it was all the reward that I needed to keep me going. Wow! My journey continued, and the charms accumulated. Now at a weight, uh, now at my goal weight, I wear my charms with a confidence that I never had before keto. As a bonus, it has helped me to introduce many people to keto when they ask about my necklace. I thank God for my precious husband who has encouraged me all the way, even joining me on the journey. Yes. He knew when I needed a boost, when I needed some discipline, and when I needed a hug. And he prayed for me all the entire time, mm -hmm. as he still does. I am one blessed girl, even though I'm 75. Wow. <laughs> Faith. <laughs> So, oh so like I said, go take a look at the post because the post actually has what each charm means. But yeah, I mean, I was tearing up reading it on Facebook and like we're tearing up now. Wow. Faith, that is maybe one of the most romantic things I've ever seen. I think a lot of people are going to steal that idea from your husband though because that is brilliant. You know, you're enjoying the start, but with every single charm, you're seeing all that accomplishment and celebrating it all right. along the way. Right. And just adding to that charm bracelet, that is so supportive. Yeah. And wow. It was funny because reading that post, it really hit home for me because yeah, we used to only reward ourselves with food. We True. used to only, I mean, like I said, no kidding. That is how we celebrated our anniversaries. We didn't go on trips. We didn't buy no. each other presents. Our anniversaries were, let's gorge on food that is not healthy for you. Yeah. And so we've always encouraged people now, like when you hit a goal and to have these little mini goals, but when you hit your goal, doing something like that, the charm. I love that idea. I love that. I think about even for the kids. Yeah. Like I know that, you know, we made some bad choices, but also I think about when kids would hit their AR reading goal mm -hmm. or they would be on the honor roll, the reward was always food. Right. Even from the school, the reward was food. It wasn't right. like you would hit a ice reading cream, goal. McDonald's. Ice cream, pizza, that sort of thing. And there's got to be more ways that we can get creative like your amazing husband did and, and have something that will be long-lasting in a good way. Yeah. Not a long-lasting association with food. Let's go into the comments. Um, we're going to talk about the, first of all, the comments from last week's Keto on the Couch. The first one is from Keto Andy. Hey, Andy. They say, yes, Joe looks like a monk <laughs> in search of a mountaintop. I don't expect the other monks will be into keto, though. I eat two eggs most every day, but find three to be overfilling. So the idea of a dozen a day is crazy talk. I've been stuck in the house for a number of years and do low carb, but can't seem to make a dent in the weight. Need to lose 200 pounds. I'm eating right, I believe. So the next step will be to eat less. What a pain. You've got this. Don't worry about it, Andy. You just keep doing the right thing. And, and we talk about this all the time. If you're feeling better, if you're getting off of medications, but you never lose a pound, is it still worth it? Yeah. I think it is. I mean, the fact that my inflammation is gone, that I don't need a wheelchair anymore, if I would have never lost any weight, it would still be worth it to not have to deal with that wheelchair anymore. Well, and as far as like reducing your food and stuff, I think just lead with protein. Mm -hmm. Lead with your protein for the day, whatever it is that you're eating as a protein, and see if that doesn't make a natural shift yeah. happen. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Marie. Hey, Marie. Marie said, Joe's hoodie does kind of look like a monk. Sure For does. Mother's Day, I am working on a final paper. I am 55 and I decided to go back to school for my uh, education degree. Wow. You two are such an encouragement for health and lifestyle. Thank you for a great show. You are so much fun. I love the show. Thanks, Marie. Wow. And what a great thing. I love the idea of continuing your education journey no matter what age. Mm -hmm. I know that at some point, I will be going back for my master's degree and doctorate myself because I just enjoy 
education and now you know you have a schedule as like as an older person it's harder when you're younger right. to fit in that time and it's sort of like i finished my undergraduate and it was kind of like all right i'm done for a while you know after you've done 13 years up to high school and then college and you're like you're ready for a break and start a family but now that's a great time to 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 learn something new well i actually i, I was talking about I'm, I'm working on anthony but i told him i really want to go to texas to uh, learn how to work on RVs. A lot of it from my own knowledge, just to, yeah. because there's not a lot of RV techs and there's really only three places in the entire country that teach you how to be an RV tech and can get you certified unless you actually go work for one of the actual RV manufacturers right. up in Indiana. And so like, there's a place in Texas, there's one in Tampa, there's one in Texas, and there's one in Indiana. And the problem is the one in Tampa, you have to go eight weeks straight. Like, there's no break. I'm like, well, It'd be really hard first of all, us. there's no way I'm ever going eight weeks away from Rachel. That's just not happening. And I don't see you living in the RV for eight straight weeks in Tampa without ever seeing the children. I don't think I could do it. So, so the second option is go to Texas, where I can do a one-week program, which is kind of step one, and you can get your first certification. Then you can go do another time, go back and do a two-week program to like learn how to be an inspector. Mm -hmm. And then you can go back again for a four-week program where you become like a master RV tech. I think you'd love it. And I would love to do, but I like, again, the, the thing about the one in Texas is you can go, you can break it up. You can do a week here, two weeks here, four weeks here. I'm trying to convince Anthony to go. And Anthony is like, I don't think I want to spend like 10 days in an RV with just you, dad. Like, I love you, Aww. but like, he's like, I don't know about that one. But I, I'm trying. I would love to just, for my own knowledge, and it would be a cool, like, extra little career. We're out RVing. Hey, your RV needs to be you fixed. Be helpful. Let me help you. I, I can fix it for you. Well, I think it's awesome. And I totally support you in that. And maybe we're also talking to somebody else out there and you've been on the fence about taking that next step in your own personal education. And you're thinking, I'm too old or, you know, too much time has passed since I've been to school. No, it's not. Yeah. You know, we're keto. So we can think outside the box. That's and just right. because things have been going in a certain direction, even for a really long time, it's never too late to make a U-turn. Yeah. I do want to say, if Anthony does back out, you will be going with me. I get it. But, but A the week, cool, I can handle. The, the spouses are allowed to come to some of them. And the cool thing about that one program is I will be they asking. actually, if you go an Guaranteed. hour early every morning... Um, they teach you how to run your own business. So, which would be, again, good for somebody like Anthony. So, not mandatory, but you're going to learn how to, like, do your taxes and file for corporation and have your own business. Can you imagine the shenanigans while people are trying to learn? I'd yep. be like, Miss Rachel, please leave. Please. <laughs> okay, next one is from Donna. Hey, Donna. She says, oh, my goodness, Rachel, I was thinking the same thing. Gee, Joe looks like he's headed to the Anybody monastery. on my side. <laughs> yeah, kind of monk-like. <laughs> Oh boy, you had me laughing so hard. Love you guys. Love you too, Donna. And yeah, I don't know. Nobody's and, on my side. Well, we and I I believe I was the one that purchased that hoodie. You did. So on the hanger, I wasn't even thinking I'm about to put a bald guy in this <laughs> with a beard and he's totally going to like rock that look. So I need to I need to think a little bit. It's kind of like when you name your kids and then you and then you get them you, into the name. You, you helped me you purchase this for me. So you did think correct. I was talking to Caleb, or, or I was talking to somebody else about Caleb, and we were talking about initials, and his is CLR. And I'm like, oh, I didn't think about that. Isn't that like a clearing off the grime, like chemical yeah. disinfectant? You yeah. know? And I'm like, it, at the time, I just didn't think about the initials going into his name. Next one is from Sheila. Hey, Sheila. Sheila said, I thought he looked like a monk as soon as I seen you guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and hey, here's the thing. I think you notice it more because I'm usually dressed a little bit silly. So yeah. when you look costumed, I mean, people are thinking, I'm going to look at two crazy ketos and there's a good chance. Rachel's going to say balls. Well, balls. But that there's going to be a costume involved. They're just not thinking it's going to be On me. you. Unless I'm wearing a hat. Unless you're doing our Tiger King. Our Tiger King. Oh, um, yes. I Halloween costume. That. Next one is from Wade. 
Hey, Wade, we had for um, Mother's Day, Mother's Day, hamburgers, hot dogs, sausages, chuck ribs, and ribeye. I have uh, ribeye steak. I have enough left over for lunch and dinner for the next two weeks. That's not a bad thing. That is not a bad thing. That doesn't yeah. make me upset at all. We finished the last of the leftovers Friday night. Yeah. That was actually, I think there's one rib left. For some reason, nobody wants to eat the last rib. But what it is lasted that? all week long. I mean, it was really, really good. Is that a courtesy thing? Or is that a, I, I wonder if this one's still okay to eat? <laughs> What do you think? I think it's a little bit of both. A little bit of both. I think it's, I don't know if it's okay to eat, but you know what? If I eat the last one, dad may get upset. There you so go. let me leave it for him. Just leave one. What is something else that like, okay, here, I've got, I've got the perfect answer for me. I will leave one square of toilet paper. I know. And it's not very annoying. just take the roll. I don't know why. I will go get a new roll and put it next to it, but there'll be like one square left because I don't want you to think that I left it with nothing. You know what Anthony likes to do? Anthony likes to use heavy cream because he likes to experiment. He loves to cook. So like last week, him and Sarah made homemade butter. Okay. Like they made like a garlic butter. They were but trying they, to imitate like Chef Shammy. Just a drop. So he was like, do we have any heavy cream? I'm like, yeah. So he comes out and he was like, oh, this is a lot of heavy cream I'm going to need. And I'm like, that's okay. Go ahead. We can always come back and buy more. So I go to use the heavy cream next day because the containers, he literally leaves like one drop. Right. Like I didn't use it all. all. I'm like, really? Like just throw yeah. it out? Like in this way, when I look in the refrigerator, if I look in the refrigerator and I see a container of heavy cream, I'm like, we have heavy we cream. Have cre yeah, but you don't. But I don't because there's one drop left in it. Somebody did it with the almond milk too. And I'm yes. like, just throw out the container. But they don't want to be known as being the person that like, ate the last or drank the last. So what is the thing in your house that everyone will just leave a, like a splash? It's not even like really helpful, but just they'll leave a little bit left so that they're not the last person to toothpaste finish it. Toothpaste too. That's toothpaste. another one. Yes. Like, like it's here, it looks like I have toothpaste, but I would have to squeeze the fool out of this thing and turn it inside out to even brush I'm my teeth. I'm sitting out on the shower floor, like taking the toothbrush handle and like <laughs> pushing it all the way yeah. up, trying to get it out. Uh, next one is from Jennifer Loves Gruten Grogu. Oh, I Said, love that Said for name. Mom's Day, I think most moms just love being told how much they are loved and appreciated. It works for me. Jennifer, I am so with you on that, especially as the kids get older. Like, the macaroni necklaces are so much more precious now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, Anthony did make me a hand print um last uh last year yeah. with his hand and of course it's this giant man hand and then Caleb actually took a picture with me at church because they had this like mom and baby photo op at right. church where it was like you know you'd put the little baby in your lap well we got a picture taken together and I was joking that he's 242 months <laughs> my my cute little baby but yeah we don't care we just want to spend time with you uh, next one is from Daphne. Hey, Daphne. She says, all I wanted was time with my kids. Spent last Saturday with my twins and family. This past Saturday, out to lunch with my youngest son and a long phone call with my oldest son and his wife on Mother's Day. My heart is so full. That is what it's all about. Yeah. It's just communication with the family. Same for my mom. She just wants all the little ducklings to come by and, right. and say hi, howdy, hey to her. Uh, next one is from Brianna. Hey, Brianna. Said, my husband eats homemade bacon and or sausage every mm. day, but pork ribs make him feel queasy. Okay, thank you. He is learning to tell me when certain foods make him feel bad, so we can avoid them. He has always been thin, active, and aggravatingly healthy, Aww. but feels so much better on keto. He is amazed. He didn't know how bad he felt until he started feeling so much better. That's so good. Turns out he had a hidden six pack. Wow. Well, hello. So, You're welcome. That is absolutely true, though. Like, you know, I can think back to pre-keto. I mean, I was fat, but I, I always said, like, I'm healthy fat, right? I mean, until up until the very end. I mean, most of the time when I was fat and obese, I did have normal blood pressure. At the very end, when I was at my heaviest, I started experiencing, like, high blood pressure. You started experiencing, like, stroke-like symptoms yes, almost. Yes, I was having stroke symptoms. But, you know, I always felt healthy. I was able to run on a football field pretty quickly. You know, even though my ankle hurt, like I didn't have heart problems or anything like that. And then I didn't realize how bad I really was until I started losing the weight and got healthy. Same, same here. I think that we shouldn't confuse 
the fact that we have a strong worth ethic yeah. and that can push ourselves and grind out a day and force ourselves to, to put in a 12 or 14 hour work day. That is not the same thing as healthy. Right. It is not sustainable. And, and it's not something that we should just ignore because yeah. it's not something that you're going to be able to do for the rest of your life. But to just to get back for a second about the pork, Thank you so much that I am not the only person that struggles with this pork. And because it is such a keto food, right. because everybody loves bacon, and I love bacon too, when I can't eat pork, I feel like a wimp. Well, you like there's something pork, wrong you just with can't me. Eat certain kinds of pork. It it's makes very me weird. sick. But I feel like you can eat all the bacon you want. But I will talk to my my tummy, and I will be like, "You need to get your stuff together because you're a keto tummy, and you need to be able to eat pork ribs." And my tummy Does it is respond. Grr, 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 grr. <laughs> I'm not eating that. <laughs> Uh, next one is from Heather. Hey Heather, she says, eggs without cheese or fat? Nope, could not do that. I'm doing the I breathe, I'm hungry five day egg fast with thankfully, uh, which thankfully has some variety even though it's still just fat, cheese, eggs, and some sweetener and spices. Yeah, there's a lot of people who do the egg fast like that. Rachel just decided to make, let's make this really, really strict. Really I think it was tough. to aggravate Joe, but. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did it aggravate you? Something no, wonderful came out of it. we got something wonderful out of it. Yeah. So, uh, next one is from Jesse and Melissa. Hey, Jesse and Melissa. Said, I've always been heavy and done every diet there is. For whatever reason, I always had an excuse not to continue. I went to the doctor April 2nd and weighed in at 366 pounds, which was higher than either time I was pregnant with my babies. He told me that I was going to end up like my dad, who is diabetic, and both my parents have high blood pressure. For whatever reason, this time, something has clicked in my brain, and I decided to start keto and did begin the next day, April 3rd. The first three weeks, I lost 18 pounds. Wow. Week four, there was a slight gain, but I remember you both saying the scale is the devil. Amen. So where I would normally quit, I kept my head high and I kept going. Good job. I've just finished week five and I dropped 5.5 pounds. Wow. So total... 23.5 pounds Fantastic. in five weeks certainly isn't a bad deal no i haven't done much exercise because i figured i'd start with one change at a time yep i can actually walk around and go up and down the stairs in my house now without dying so good so i can certainly tell the difference already i'm in it to win it i'm excited for everything and where i may be at this time next year my husband, Jesse, also joined me, but he's tall. And at 216 pounds, he's down to 210. That's but awesome. it's so nice that we're in this together. You inspire me to keep going strong. I love you two crazy kiddos. Well, Jesse and Melissa, we love you too also. And I am so excited for your future. I had the same experience that you did where I gained more than double uh, the weight I did during pregnancy. Like I was so much heavier than I was when I was pregnant after I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So um, that was something that I experienced too. And it was very frustrating because I thought after pregnancy, you know, the weight is just going to come off and I'm not going to have a problem right. with it. But that wasn't the case. In fact, it just it just led to more and more uh, growth over, over the years. So... The fact that you're like, this is it. It doesn't matter how many times before, and that's for you and for anybody, however many times before you've had to restart or like decide that this is it, you're going to do it. It doesn't matter. You're in it now. Mm -hmm. And let's just keep moving forward. And you're having such great results already. I'm so proud of you. And I do think that spouses, partners, if you can help to partner with your partner on right. this, it makes such a difference. And if you don't have a partner, go into the Facebook family group. There's a link down below. If you're not a member of the Facebook family group, why not? There are so many awesome people in there. Go down there, join the Facebook family group, go in there and type, I need an accountability partner. Yep. You're going to be shocked by how many people are willing to reach out. They will message you. They will Zoom call with you. They will FaceTime with you to keep you motivated. You are not you are in this not alone. alone. And if nobody reaches out to you, you send us an email at joe at 2 crazy ketoscom or rachel at 2 crazy ketoscom and we will help you through it. We would be proud to be your partner in this. So let's go ahead and 
and take a quick commercial break and we'll come back with all the Facebook comments. I really hope I'm not getting sunburnt right now. I'm gonna wear my long sleeve shirt. I've learned my lesson. It's nice to wear a bathing suit, but in the Keys especially, that water reflects right. the sun and you get burnt even on an overcast day. Okay, let's get into the Facebook comments. And the first one is from Laylee. Hey Laylee. She said, "Yeah, y'all, I'm on a plane for the first time in over a year. Yay. I buckled the seatbelt and I even had to pull it tight. I used to travel all the time for work and I had bought my own seatbelt extensions so that I wouldn't have to deal with the embarrassment of asking for one. I am so proud of you. That is huge. That's a huge accomplishment. That is a huge accomplishment because honestly, if I had even known that you could purchase seatbelt extensions like personally, we would have done that long ago oh, yeah. because we always had to ask for the seatbelt extension yeah. and it was always a really hard ask. And for whatever reason, I always would catch a very busy flight attendant where I had to like Yell say it. it over and over again until they connected with me. And I was so embarrassed by that. So that that's a huge, huge win. I remember the first time we went to a theme park after losing the weight and I no longer had to go. Can I please have row two seat three? Yeah, you just knew. Because that's the one with the double seat belt for the fat guy. So it, it is, it, it's a, sounds like a small thing. It's not small. But it's such a huge non-scale victory. So congratulations. I can even remember when we would go on a plane and we would fight over Anthony. Yeah. Sitting next to him because he was the littlest of the kids. He got most room. And you would have the most room. And, and I, I would know that if there was somebody that was not in our party on the other side of me, I could at least kind of like lean toward him. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Renee. Hey, Renee. She says, so for today's May in Motion Challenge, once again, I swear, I think Joe and Rachel are in cahoots with Bronson because he had air squats in today's plan. So sit down and stand up, but a few more than five. <laughs> of course, they were just the beginning of what blossomed into one sweaty mess of a workout. I'll tell you, never look at a workout plan that has some short timed activities like two minutes of something or three minutes of something and think oh that shouldn't be too bad because i'm here to say oh it'll be bad that workout it was like oh my gosh and i was the same way i would like you know there's some days where i've had to skip a day because i had a bunch of stuff going on and you look in there and you're like oh this is an easy one like two minutes of something i can do like, that yeah, no, those are usually the worst. It, you're better off with go take a five mile run. Workouts are like roller coasters. Yeah. If they're over quick, they're probably the most death defying. They're the scariest. Yeah. So we're halfway through the month of May. Mm -hmm. Are you going to give any kind of a tease for the June? I know we're only halfway through, but I think some people want to tease. Okay, I'm going to give you one clue. Okay. You're going to need to pack your suitcase. That's it? Yep. Really? That's that what kind of clue is that? You're gonna need to pack your suitcase. At least at least a a a, a mindset of a suitcase. Okay. I don't think that's much of a clue. But. I know. Okay, next one is from Denise. Hey Denise. Said, do any of you use exogenous ketones to aid in your keto journey? Okay, so I know we talked about this before, but there's a lot of new people, so we always like to talk about it. Hi, new people. Um, so exogenous ketones, there is a purpose to them, okay? It is not to lose weight. No. So it, exogenous ketones will help you with a little bit of energy. They're great for a pre-workout if you really need that extra energy. Now, Bronson will tell you, you absolutely don't need them. Use your fat for fuel. But if you need that little extra push, like driving home from New York on a 10-hour drive as the only driver. You want mental clarity. I took exogenous ketones a couple times. Why? I wanted the full mental clarity. I wanted that boost of energy. I wanted to make sure that I was raring to go as I was driving and not, I didn't want to eat a whole bunch while we're driving. And so that's a good time to take them. If you need to have really good mental focus, they'll help with that. Studying for a test. If you, some people have some medical issues where they need to have high ketones for like mental things, you know, for if you're dealing with like epilepsy, stuff like that, and you're doing you like brain nutritional injury. ketosis for that kind of stuff, that's where they're really good. But exogenous ketones will not 
help you lose weight any faster. Even Perfect Keto, who sells them under the name of Base, will say they will not help you lose any weight. And it's not that they're bad or scary for you. We're not trying to scare you away from them. No, we use them. We just don't want you to spend money on something thinking that the outcome will be weight loss and then be disappointed by that. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, they're okay, but they're definitely not a necessity. And you certainly don't need the ones from a certain multi-level marketing company that sells them for over $100 for a yeah. box. And the Perfect Keto ones are good. There's other good companies out there. Perfect Keto, we like them. We like the ingredients in them. We do have a coupon code for them. There are some other companies out there. And pretty much all the ketones... Uh, they come from the same company called Go BHB. So, so you're, def- pretty, you're getting the same ketones in almost every one of them. So it's about getting a flavor yep. that you like and getting a reasonable price. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Cindy. Hey, Cindy. She says, question, thinking of adding protein powder to boost my intake a bit. Any recommendations for a brand or a good way to use it? I don't make or eat any kind of treats, so I'm thinking unflavored. Thanks, family. Okay, so um, as far as protein powder, depends on what you're looking for. If you if you don't mind milk protein, keto chow is a really good, it's basically a protein powder that has all of the vitamins, electrolytes, and nutrients in it. After that, I would recommend Equip, who happens to be the sponsor for today. Yeah. Uh, Equip's got a beef protein, super clean ingredients. Now they are flavored. You say you're not making treats. Usually I would only use an unflavored if I'm actually making treats with it. So if you want to make breads or things like that. If you're just going to drink it, my personal opinion, and my opinion is very different from other people's, even Rachel's. Yeah. um, I don't think any unflavored anything tastes very good. I, I, there's always a flavor, yeah. like even yeah. unflavored, you know, electrolytes. Like keto like chow, they're not saline. unflavored. They have a flavor. It's there's like no salty. added flavor. Right. And if you don't want to go on the sweet side, which I totally understand, you can also go with like a keto chow that's a savory right. dish. Because sometimes we will put, you know, tomato basil or something, right, cook it in our chili. Yeah. And so you're getting the protein powder in there. Yeah. But if you're looking for a beef protein, I would go with Equip. If you absolutely want unflavored, which uh, Equip does not have it unflavored, I would recommend uh, maybe Isopure. Those are really the only ones that I recommend on a regular basis. We used to use Isopure, but we just discovered uh, Keto Chow and Equip and we like them much better. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Lori. Hey, Lori. Lori said, hit my longest walk since my spinal fusion. Yes. Three miles. But I'm so exhausted the next day. Should I split into shorter walks? Help. I'm upping my protein at least 100 grams most days, but my goal is 130. I think Jerry had a great answer to that. That's mm-hmm. kind of what he's doing is splitting it up. So if you're doing it, you know, maybe a mile in the morning, a mile in the afternoon, and a mile after dinner. Yeah. Now, first of all, I want to say we are not doctors or health professionals and anything we're going to tell you is just our own personal opinion, things that we've learned from studying and talking to people. With that being said, I would, first of all, listen to your doctor. If your doctor says, hey, don't go three miles, don't go three miles, okay? Right. Especially if you just had a spinal fusion. That's true. If you're only tired, I would continue to push yourself. You know, I would not stop when you're not tired. I would go until you're tired and then stop and then try to go further each time. It's like working out. If, if you're only working out and you're never sore or never get to that point where I can't do one more, you're not really helping yourself as much as you want to get to that point where that last one or two, that's the struggle. And then the goal is to make that not a struggle. And then when it's not a struggle, push a couple more on. Yeah. So, but you kind of have to, if, if you're really, really exhausted where you can't move or anything, maybe cut it back to two miles and then work yourself back up to three miles. But that is definitely something, I mean, that is such a serious, you know, surgery to be recovering from that that is definitely something that i would have a conversation about with your doctor or physical therapist yeah uh next one is from pat hey pat she says i'm struggling with constipation always have all my life now on keto and it's worse any suggestions okay again not doctors nurses health practitioners or anything like that um increase your fat a little bit sometimes that is going to get things moving uh, a lot of times it could also be electrolytes. Mm-hmm. Um, try getting some cal- uh, magnesium citrate in there. Uh, I learned very quickly that when we started doing two keto chows a day for the, at the beginning, 
it definitely helped uh, get things moving with some bathroom pyrotechnics. But just always keep in mind as you're on a keto diet, something that that's still kind of like my mom and I will discuss because we were so used to having a diet that was full of fillers, right? You had a lot of, you know, corn and grains and things that your body doesn't even use. Mm -hmm. So we would be going to the bathroom, number two, like much more frequently than we do now. Right. Why? Because we eat food that our body uses all of it. Right, right. Same with Tabitha. We feed Tabitha, a, you know, she's keto carnivore dog food without a bunch of fillers in it. And she's a giant dog that doesn't make giant poop piles. Yeah. Now, one thing I would say, you know, be careful. I know a lot of people when they start getting constipated and they want to jump to laxatives, just be careful with laxatives because laxatives, number one, they can become addictive. And then what happens is you end up eating more and more and more and really screwing up your whole system. So you're really trying better off just using some fats to kind of get things moving. Maybe try some MCT oil. That usually yes. really helps. If you're not used as to As well as some magnesium. Try upping your magnesium. You could be really low on magnesium. But if you're using MCT oil, make sure it's a teeny tiny amount to start with if you're not used to it. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Michelle. Hey, Michelle. She says, so I shared my non-scale victory recently. I had posted about inch loss despite my scale being stuck or jumping up for a few months. That crazy scale took a seven pound wow. drop in the last few days. Michelle, thank you so much for giving us an update on that because things are happening and you can't control the timeline on that. That mm -hmm. is what is so frustrating. You can't you know, determine where the fat's going to come off. We've always said like, I would love it if m my fat would come off of my thighs and butt first. Always comes out of my face, always comes off of my boobs, always comes out of my neck. I don't know why, but you can't control it. You also can't control when it decides to dump. Yeah. <laughs> Next one is from Christopher. Hey, Christopher. Said, so the past three to four weeks, I've apparently become a snacker. I went over 18 months without snacking between meals, except for the occasional Saturday or holiday. However, I guess between buying a house, beginning to lift weights, having to actually go back to work 90 minutes away with an apartment away from the family, fixing up the old house, kids baseball, more days, uh, this is than, uh, than not has gotten the best of me. I started by having a perfect keto bar with a bang or a zip fizz for breakfast to help wake me up for work. I haven't been eating terrible ingredients. I'm not in pain or any of that, but I'm bloating some and have some discomfort at night while eating too late. So tonight I decided to go to Walmart and get six pounds of beef to cook up and meal prep for the next three days to make sure I'm eating plenty of meat. I promise it's under the wraps. Here's to cleaning up. Going to try to stop snacking, get back to where I was, which is going to require me to start eating a lot more meat again. I hear ya. Yeah. I definitely, you know, I never was a snacker up until like the whole COVID thing and then being home more and like getting under stress of all of a sudden having to do a lot more online stuff, not just for two crazy ketos, but you know, for church and everything else. And I don't know. I just started snacking more and it's been a, a struggle to not be a snacker. I think snacking, you know, again, not non-keto foods, just snacking and not getting a lot of sleep are my biggest two problems. Well, and thank you so much for sharing that, Christopher, because I think that you're really going to encourage a lot of people who don't understand maybe why they're also snacking right. because yeah, you, you've you perfectly linked it to some stressful, albeit happy stress, it's you stress, but any kind of stress, even if it's, you know, getting married, getting a new house, having a baby, you know, starting a new job that you're really excited about, starting college. What do they say? A lot of people, usually you start college and you gain some weight because well, freshman you're, 15. you're enjoying like your, your, you know, new life and some, you know, independence, all of that stuff is great. But in response to that, we tend to put things in our mouth. Now they should be unrelated, right? Baseball and food don't need to go together, but it's just what we do. Right. So that is a great plan to go out there and get some beef and have some meal prep ready. And so 
if not just Christopher, but if you're having some trouble snacking, try to cook up and have ready and available some good protein because the protein will fill you up in the moment and it'll help you from not like just grazing on snacks all day long. Yeah. So we have one more and it's from Linda. Hey Linda. She said, I have a question about alternate day fasting. I heard Joe mention on YouTube the other day that when you do alternate day fasting, you really need to eat twice as much on the day that you're eating. I understand I should be eating twice as much protein as I would for one day, but do I also do twice as much fat and twice as much carbs? I'm not fasting for any particular health reason, but I've lost 85 pounds and I really don't like my bat wings. Autophagy is my goal and I wanna be certain that I'm doing it the correct way. Thanks for any advice you might have. Well, thanks, okay, Linda. So um, you don't need to eat twice the carbs. Remember, the carbs is your limit. The fat is your limit. Right. But that doesn't mean only double your protein, but don't double your fat. You definitely, you want to eat until you're comfortably full. But again, if you're alternate day fasting, you should be eating, that's an eating day. So you're going to eat all day and then you're going to be fasting for 24, 36, 48 hours. The reason you don't want to cut all your fat way back is you're going to end up possibly slowing down your metabolism. Yeah. So you're you're in a, it, remember when you're alternate day fasting, you're fasting and you're feasting. Mm -hmm. So on your feast day, you feast. Get all of that protein in. So I'm not saying you don't have to eat half as you know double the fat that you would, but definitely don't cut out the whole day's fat. You know, yeah. again, you want to be getting at least 50 to 60 grams of fat per day. So I would say like somewhere around 100 grams of fat if you're alternate day fasting. Well, because you're also trying to get yourself between days. That's a long stretch of time that you're trying to stay satiated. And that's mm -hmm. what the fat will help with. Right. As far as the carbs go, we don't need any carbs. Right. Carbs yeah. is is a luxury item. Right. So it, that's just the fun food, honestly. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest mistake that I made when I first got started on keto. I thought you had to hit all three macros. And I didn't understand that, like, hey, okay, so protein is the goal. You need to get that much protein in. And, you know, that fat and carbs were limits and levers. And I didn't understand that. I was always like, at the end of the day, I would look at it and go, okay, wait a second. I filled up all my protein, but I've got 20 grams of fat left and I need to get yeah. this fat. So I would literally would sit down butter. and eat sticks of butter. And then I was like, okay, well now I'm short on carbs. What do you, you know, what do I do? And like, where can I get carbs in? Well, you don't need, if, if you, you have to understand oxidative priority. And if you start understanding that, okay, the way your body works is it gets rid of carbs first, then it goes to fat. And then after that, if there's no carbs and no fat, it will go to protein. Well, if you understand that, well, if I'm eating 20 grams of carbs, before I can start using fat for fuel, I've got to burn off the 20 grams of carbs. I want to get rid of those as well, fast as possible. Well, that means if I only have 10 grams of carbs, I get to the fat that much quicker. Yeah. So that's just something to remember. You don't. You can eat zero carbs every day, which is almost impossible because there's carbs Residual. in eggs and there's carbs in coffee and Seasonings. everything else. But, but, you know, keeping it low is not going to hurt you. Well, that's going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We enjoyed it as we're typing live from Key Largo right now. Hey there. So now don't forget on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Uh, we do our live streams, 8.30 again p.m. Eastern time. Right. And also check out and make some of the other videos. that We have some recipe videos coming out. We have a couple of other cool videos coming out. Also make sure you check out our camping channel. We've got a lot of cool vlogs coming out on there. Yeah. As well as a bunch of upgrades to our RV that we're working on right now. Exciting. Now if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other Keto on the Couches because there's 113 of them. And I'm going to wow. link that right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way, subscribe to our channel, and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.